Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about dun, 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 how to fix a hem that you cut too short. Oh no! Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. Well, I guess you've already noticed, this is one of the longer videos that I've produced, but that's because there's so many different types of hems. So let's sneak back into my gown storage room and we're gonna go through different hem styles because there's different ways to solve the problem of cutting a hem too short. There's different reasons why a hem turns out too short and I'll give you a hint, it's not always your fault. All right, so here's an example. Uh, what if you have a rolled hem, it could have horse hair or not, and it's just coming up too short off the ground? Well, obviously, go ahead and re-sew it with a more narrow rolled hem. Now, the way to get it more narrow is to change up your needles. So instead of, say, you used a 14 the first time, try a nine, try a finer thread, um, and try to get that roll a little tighter and it really will make a huge difference and you'll be able to use some of that hem allowance that's in that roll. Now if it does have horsehair braid in the hem, like this example shows, you could switch from whatever width it originally was, marked by an A, to a new width that's a little thinner, marked by the B. Um, so the thinner the horsehair braid, uh, you'll get a little bit less spring out of that. And you can see the examples of the skirts. The A is springing a little more just on that bottom layer, the layer that's closest to the floor. That's usually the layer you're going to go after is the one um, that is the outermost layer that is closest to the floor. Um, so you'll see example B in the skirt. Um, that bottom most layer doesn't spring out as much but it's a little bit longer so try swapping out the horsehair braid if the change is not too obvious you can also switch from a rolled hem to a surged now with this example i'm cutting a little bit off i just grabbed this from some stock footage that i have um, you don't actually want to surge off any of the hem allowance. You want to use every bit of it. Here's an example. The one on the left is surged. The one on the right is a rolled hem with a straight stitch. Obviously, if this was going to be on the outer layer and you wanted it to look nice, that left example is not a perfect example. Again, I'm grabbing these from my um, gown storage room. The one on the left um, should be more of a rolled hem that it has a tighter shorter uh, stitch length so it, it has a finer look to it this has a more spaced out stitch length because that's actually the lining of the dress um, but this is just an example of how you could switch from one to the other now keep in mind if you do ever um, accidentally cut a hem too short you've truly cut it too short and you're having to solve the problem by making any type of design change to the gown that is a decision that needs to be completely transparent you need to be honest with the bride honesty is always the best policy and work together on a solution that she is still very pleased with now this is a gown that I actually in real life have cut too short before. Um, this, this gown has a few uh, aspects to it that can really um, throw a wrench into things. Um, let me just make this black and white so you can see it for a moment. This gown that I have actually altered many, many times, it's kind of the trifecta of, of things that can cause you to cut a hem too short. It has a waist stay in it. Um, it has a chiffon outer layer uh, with chiffon and organza. Both um, tend to draw up um, as you hem them. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's, it's, kind of based upon the weave of the fabric the way it's woven and it's also a circle skirt so um i think it's like it seems like more of like a three-quarter circle but that front panel is cut on a circle and we'll talk about that later also um, a lot of times when a seamstress cuts a hem crooked she actually cut it straight on the table and then when you get it back on the bride it's a circle skirt 
um, and it is now laying wavy. So we'll go through all of those steps. Uh, but the reason why I cut it too short was um, when the bride had this dress on for me to mark the hem, she did not have the waist stay hooked. And then uh, when she had her try on after I hemmed it, um, it was picked up in, in two matching places, two symmetrical places across the front of the gown. It was picked up off the ground. And I was like, this is so strange. Um, and it was because she had hooked the waist stay uh, for her final fitting. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to fix that problem as well. Uh, let's dive into this dress. This is a perfect example of a very sneaky way, very, very sneaky. Nobody will ever see this fix um, on this style dress. Um, many dresses have this. It's the lace that is overlaying the waist seam where the bodice meets the skirt. And what you do is you just lift that lace away, the blue line that I have there, lift that up, and then you're going to add like an inch or so of a very fine fabric marked by that pink, that wide pink line. Um, now, you only have to lift the lace to that upper green line. Don't completely take it off. That's going to cause a lot more work. But just lift it from the blue. Add the pink across the front. Um, and you're going to want to kind of taper that in before you get to the side seams. That's going to drop your skirt down. Then you're going to lay the lace back down. And you're going to stitch all those appliques back down on the uh, skirt. Now, whenever you do cut it too short and it's your fault, you never charge the bride for the fix, right? That That's just bad business to do that kind of thing. That's dishonest. But yes, so stitch around the blue. It's going to take a little time, but this is very, very inconspicuous fix. Here's another example of a gown that has the applique that's going over that waist seam. This would also be very easy um, to lift that lace off of the skirt, um, add some extra tool there to the top of the skirt, the top layer of it, and... Um, just so applique some lace back over it. You would have to fill in this little gap that I'm gesturing to, but you can put a little inch or so of tool in there, cover it over with lace, and that'll drop the front down nicely. Obviously, the same concept is going to work for any dress that has some type of a sash or a belt to it. You can always add a little tool there or even just make that seam have less of a seam allowance where the waist meets the skirt. Now, another way that you can fix this, um, a common problem is maybe you didn't even cut it too short, but it looks way too short. Um, a lot of times on these really open weave fabrics like an organza or a chiffon, when you uh, sew them, you're springing them out horizontally. You're stretching them out horizontally. And then when the bride puts it on, it's drawn up. So if you steam it and give a nice downward pull while you're steaming, that a lot of times can get the weave to lay the right way again. So here's an example A over here on the left. You can see that as you pull the fabric through the machine, you're giving this long horizontal sideways kind of pull to that hem that can really, you know, I don't know if you've ever messed with open weave fabrics, like picture a scarf. You can pull it one way, you know, um, pull it horizontally and the scarf is going to get shorter. And then you can flip it and do it the opposite way. You can really make this fabric go one way or another. So keep those properties of the fabric in mind when you're trying to troubleshoot this. So, um, you can see here with the diagram with the with the B side of things when you get the bride in the dress always do this downward pull I almost comb the front panel of the dress down with my fingers and give it a nice solid steady pull and just do that for a minute or two and you're gonna see the dress does start getting longer and longer um, and of course, um, like I showed with the first slide in this segment, you're definitely want to gonna you're definitely going to want to go ahead and steam it that way with the with the vertical pull. 
This will make a dramatic difference, sometimes like three inches, all right? So organza and chiffon, I'm giving you the side eye right now. Listen to me, BST besties. You can never trust organza or chiffon. You need to be on high alert when you are hemming a gown that has those layers. That means lots and lots of pins when you're pinning them. And um, just be super careful. Hem them a little on the side of long. Now, here's another example. You can see this narrow little lace applique that's on the hem of this dress. Very, very narrow. I mean, maybe like an inch and a quarter. Um, maybe consider if you were to cut this too short, swapping out for more of like a three inch wide swing lace. That's going to drop the dress by another two inches, right? Um, and a lot of times that is considered an upgrade for the bride. Most brides are going to happily embrace that. Here's another example. Um, this is some lace that um, it's on a tulle gown with a horsehair braid. You could see how this could easily be dropped. If you just lift the lace away, you could drop the horsehair braid down on that tulle layer and then sew the lace back down. Yes, that's going to take a lot of work, but it can be fixed. All right, now uh, let's move on to this next segment about waist stays. Uh, they'll get you. <laughs> they will get you. So you need to always make sure when you're marking a hem, just check and see if the gown has a stay in there. It's supposed to be hooked to the natural waist. A lot of times when a bride has a shorter waist, though, the waist stay is hitting, when it's not hooked, a little below her natural waist. And then when you hook it, you're actually hiking the dress up. You're pulling it up, and it's making the dress a little short. So definitely look at that. You can see here in this diagram, you can see here in this photo, rather, where the stay originally was. I bumped it up a little bit. That's a very common alteration that I have to do. Um, here's another example of a girl that has got that booty pop going on. Uh, that takes some extra fabric to go through that waist notch and then to pop over. So, you know, maybe consider letting out the notch of the waist a little bit so that the dress can flow a little bit more smoothly. You'll be surprised you'll gain a couple inches just by doing that. And a lot of brides think it's more flattering as well. It makes their hips look a little slimmer. Now, here's an example of the gown where the waist is just a little bit too long for the bride. What you're going to want to do is raise that waist with those seams. Now, in this diagram, um, the part that's just under her hand, I'm showing you as if I was looking at the inside of the gown laid flat, getting ready to sew it under the machine, and you can see the original stitch lines. We're going to change the stitch lines to something more like this. We're going to raise the waist just by using our stitching. So to the eye, it's going to look like the gown is a little bit of a drop waist when she puts it on, and it is dropping that hem. Now you'll see what I've done to the shoulder strap. I did let the strap out a little bit too. When you let out both the strap and raise the waist, you can easily gain two, sometimes four inches length out of the gown. Now here's me taking a little sneaky peek back in my gown storage room again. This dress is mid-process right now, and you can see how we've peeled the lace away. And this is the new waist seam instead of the original one. And also we are dropping it uh, by e making that shoulder strap a little bit longer as well. That's going to drop the whole bust of the gown the whole waist of the gown, the whole skirt of the gown, the whole great gown is going to drop a couple inches. Now we are actually doing this because of the bride's physiognomy. We're not doing it to correct an alteration issue, but it's something that you see that does cause um, some longer hems. So you may even notice that you marked the hem. Um, you made the mistake of marking and hemming while you still had work to do on the top of the dress. Uh, when that happens, the dress, the, the bride tries the dress back on and all of a sudden the dress is like two inches too long and it looks like you didn't hem it, but you know you did. Well, that's what happened. Um, the letting things out made the dress a little bit longer. So here's a very important note. Many times a hem appears to be cut too short at a fitting and it is not. 
it often turns out that the bride has gained weight in her hips or bust and the gown is being picked up in those areas. Don't always assume that you cut it too short. Sometimes it is a fitting issue that needs to be resolved. So look at the whole picture. Don't just look at the hem. Ah, now the tool ball gowns that have the horsehair braid hem. There's a few different elements to this design that you need to look out for. Um, one fix you can see right off though is you could easily just release that horsehair braid and drop it on the tool a little bit. Um, a lot of times this is a fix that is not super obvious. It still looks very neat. Next, a lot of times um, the, the bottom of the hem is it has a rolled edge to it that has like a little bit of a hem allowance that's been sewn. You can also release that and release the horsehair braid and drop the whole thing. Um, and you could just stitch a very small, whatever that original hem allowance was, um, let's say it was one quarter inch, you could stitch one quarter inch wide, little tiny piece of tool to the bottom edge of that horsehair braid that gives the illusion that makes the edge match the edge of the rest of the gown. Um, or perhaps the bride would like to turn um, over to a raw edge on the entire gown and you can just release that hem allowance, that, that hem that's rolling over the horsehair braid edge all the way around the bottom of the dress. Now for the terrible part, what if all of those things do not work? They don't fix the dress and you've got to go scorched earth on this thing. What are you going to do to replace the front panel of the dress? And that's pretty much all I'm going to address here is just the front top outer panel. That's usually the only one that you need to fully replace if you've made a mistake because the underlayers really, you could just add a layer of ribbon or something like that to drop the hem on the underlayers. Um, number one, contact your local uh, bridal gown shop to see if you can get the top layer of the skirt off of their sample gown. Sometimes you can buy their sample gown for just a couple few hundred dollars. If you have a great relationship with them and the gown was actually purchased from them, a lot of times they will give you that sample gown because they are invested in having happy customers as well. And as long as you don't make mistakes like that very often, uh, very often would be like maybe once every three to five years, um, most of the bridal shop owners are gonna be very, very tolerant of that and they're gonna help you out. And chances are, if you have a good relationship with them, you are bailing them out and helping them out as well. Um, say a gown comes in late, it's the last minute, and how's the bride going to get alterations? Well, you work that bride in just for your relationship with that bridal salon. They're going to be happy to return the favor very often. And that's something I go into um, in one of the chapters of my book. Um, you really do need to cultivate these relationships within the industry. We all need each other. All right, number two, create a whole new front from fresh fabric that matches. Obviously, that's worst case scenario because that can be quite challenging. Um, and then the fabric cost is also going to be quite prohibitive. All right, number three, buy a used wedding gown identical to the one that is too short, have it cleaned, and take the outer front layer off to apply to the shorter gown. So your local bridal salon may not have that sample. They may not can get another sample from the design it may be back ordered. Well, you can go to the websites that sell a used wedding gown. Again, you need to have a conversation about this with the bride. Don't just put a used front on her dress and not tell her. That is very unethical. But you can go uh, to a used wedding gown website, buy an identical gown, have it cleaned, repair it, and swap out that front panel. Now, obviously, for the longevity of your trade, this segment is the most important segment of this video. We're going to talk about ways to prevent cutting a gown too short. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. All right, so we're going to look at this gown again. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have cut this gown too short as well. This is the way it looks when it is on the ironing table or the cutting table. 
It does not look straight. You may even be tempted where my fingers are to cut that part straight to correct that dip in the hem. It's not actually a problem. Look, when you pull up from the top and you get the gown pulled up as it would pull when a, gown, when a bride is in it, look at that. It's perfectly straight. So that's how it tricks seamstresses. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to thoroughly pin the daylights out of this dress while the bride is standing in it. Lots and lots of pins, all right? Pin it to the floor. I always mark to the floor. Um, you need to do whatever you and your circle of seamstresses do. Um, now, a lot of times it's going to look like this. Your hem is going to look quite wavy um, when you look at it on the table. And you need to, what I always say, trust your pins. If you know you pinned it right, trust your pins. Don't go cutting something that looks straight on the table when the pins are saying to cut wavy. Now, very often we get gowns from the manufacturer that do have very crooked hems. Here's an example of a crooked hem. Now, let's say when we pin it, the pins don't uh, run parallel to that crooked hem. That's just showing how much the, the fabric has shifted since it was originally manufactured. We're going to go with that. We're still going to trust our pins and we're going to hem it according to our pins. Now with organza and chiffon, I always try to cut the gown, you know, to be maybe an inch, an inch and a half too long. That way we can look at it with the bride standing in the gown, um, do a hem check that way. And then if we need to, we can hem an extra little crescent just in the center front. It's much easier to go back, take that little nibble out of the front rather than trying to fix a hem that has been cut too short or crooked. Now about those tool ball gowns that have the horsehair braid hem, I always do a hem check on the full horsehair braid hem ball gowns. Really, I, I almost always do a hem check, even if it's a narrow A-line. It's just better to be safe. You're going to cut the tool at least three or four inches longer than the floor. All right, so you're going to hem the dress to be too long. Thoroughly pin the horsehair to the tool with silk pins. This is so you don't add the weight that pulls it down. Now, you guys know I love those yellow-headed quilting pins. Um, they're nice and long and easy to spot. In this case, you're going to want to use silk pins because they are lighter weight. When, you, when you're looking at the weight of um, 40 or 50 pins on a very full ball gown, it can make a difference, and you don't want it to be pulling it down. And then you take the pins out, and all of a sudden the hem rises back up. All right, so with it pinned, you're going to have the hem, have the bride try it on. You're going to raise or lower the horse hair as needed and then trim the tool out from behind it as needed and then you're going to sew it down. This is the safest way. Also, check and make sure that crinoline is straight under there before you do any cutting or adjusting. Also, when you have a skirt like this, but the tool is rolled over the edge of the horsehair braid, I would certainly have her try that on also with the raw edge, just to make sure that you've got the horsehair braid placed in the correct place before you roll that edge over. Now, our next case is going to be an all-over lace gown that has the swing lace applique that is on the hem. Now, uh, what if you cut it too short and you put the swing lace uh, to where it's at the very top edge of the lace. You have no wiggle room from your mistake. You're going to have to fill in some extra lace there to fix that. But if you make it a matter of course that you always put the swing lace to where the edge of the dress is kind of at the bottom edge of the swing lace, that's gonna give you some built-in wiggle room in case you made a mistake. Same thing with rolled hems. If you will just put more hem allowance in that roll, of course you can't do it if it's gonna ruin the look of the gown, but if you can do it without messing up the look of the gown, then go for it. It does give you something to fall back on. When you have a bagged hem or a satin uh, lined horsehair braid hem gown, whichever way you call it, um, just always leave an extra inch, inch and a half of hem allowance in there and then you've got something you can let out and then always remember. 
give the side eye to organza chiffon other light flowy open weave fabrics do not turn your back on them you cannot trust them always hem them a little bit long and then adjust after as always, I hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section down below. Also, I always include extra details in the video description. That's the text box that you can drop open that's below the video. There's always lots of information in there. So remember to check that out. That's also where I put things that I forget to say in the video. So if you have a question, um, check that first because it very well may be answered in there. And sometimes I'll even put links in there that will take you to my blog that has extra pictures or materials or printables for you to use. I also have a little comments section homework assignment for you guys just to build the BST community a little bit. Share your story of a time that you cut the hem too short and tell us how you handled it, how the situation turned out. We all know that sinking, sinking feeling. Hopefully, if you're a veteran sewer, it doesn't happen very much, but we all have memories of doing it, even if it was just when we were learning to sew or um, like the story I told earlier, you know, maybe there was an issue with the stay not being hooked. We didn't realize maybe the bride changed her shoes, whatever. Just let us know in the comments below. We would love to share that moment with you. You guys be safe out there and don't forget, please hit like. It only takes a second. And then also hit subscribe. I love you forever. Here comes my channel trailer. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.